Health bar. This is crucial for giving players immediate visual feedback on their character's health status. Create a scene in which the progress bar node is the root. Edit the progress bar to your liking. Save and attach a script. In the script, we'll export a variable to reference our character. This will help us easily link the character node from the Godot editor. We also declare a variable to keep track of whether the character has a health variable. Now, let's create the health variable function to check if a node has a specific variable. The function attempts to get the variable using the get method. If the node is not null, it returns true, otherwise, it returns false. In get ready, we will check if the character node has a variable called health. If it does, we will set the progress bar's max value and the value to the character's health. We will also set has health to true and print a confirmation message. If it doesn't, we will set the has health to false and print a different message. In the process function, which runs every frame, if the health is true, we will update the progress bar's value to match the character's current health. This is a modular health bar that you can slap onto any character to the player. Let's check if it works or we'll quickly make a player. Give it a health variable, a heal and hot function to test the health bar. Add it to a scene. I will instance the health bar, add it as the child of player and connect the player to the health bar. And as you can see, if I press the heal and hot button, score system, whether it's tracking high scores or collecting points, a scoring system keeps the players motivated and competitive. Create a scene in which the label node is the root, edit to your liking. Save and add a script. Making the score system is similar to the health bar. We get a reference to our character, check if it has a score variable, and update the label to show the value of the character score. Instance the score system as a child of the player. I will quickly add a score variable to our player and add an add score and minus score function on the player. Map the functions to the damage and heal buttons respectively. run and as you can see it works you know what else works the like and subscribe buttons inventory system collecting items and managing resources is a core mechanic in many games create a scene with a control node as a root we name it to inventory add a panel or color rect as the child of the inventory node Adjust it to your liking and add a grid container as the child of the panel. Now, add a button node to the grid container. Set the custom minimum size to 128 by 128. I have some sprites prepared for the slot of the inventory and items which I would be using. Attach a script to the button node, write an export variable for the index and the variable referencing the inventory node. Create a signal in the button script. Make as many buttons or slots as you need and make sure you adjust the indexes starting with zero.
Attach a script to inventory node, add the character, max items, items and has inventory variable. Create the has variable function. In the ready function, set max items to the number of child nodes in the grid container. Check if the character node has a variable named inventory. If it does, it links the inventory to the character and sets has inventory to true. Otherwise, it sets has inventory to false. The add item function adds an item to the inventory if there is space available, then updates the inventory slots. The use item function uses an item from the inventory if it exists, performs specific actions based on the item's name, such as healing the character or adjusting the score, then removes the item from the inventory. The remove item function removes an item from the inventory if it exists and updates the inventory slots. The update inventory function iterates through each slot in the grid container. For each slot, it updates the text and icon based on the item in the inventory and disables empty slots. We will create a new scene with node as the root. Name each item, give it two variables, item name and icon. In the game scene, instantiate the player, make the inventory a child of the player, add a button node, instantiate an item node as a child of the button, attach a script to the button, add a reference to the item node and player as variables. Set the item to sword. Customize the button, duplicate, do for the potion, and run it. and you see everything works. Dialogue box. Engaging storytelling is key to any great game. Create a scene with a control node as the root. Rename it to dialogue box. Add two color rex in the scene. Name one speaker name and the other dialogue. Add a label on each of them. In the dialogue node, add a button. In the text of the button, type next. Adjust everything to your liking and save. Add a script to the dialog box node. Export dialog text as an exported dictionary to store dialog text, allowing easy editing from the Godot editor. References for our dialog are speaker's name labels and for our next button, and the variable to keep track of the current dialog index. In the ready function, connect the next button's press signal to the on next button pressed function. Hide the dialog UI by setting visibility to false. In the start dialog function, begin the dialog sequence by setting dialog text to the provided dictionary and reset the current index to zero. Show next text to display the first dialog text. In the show next text function, retrieve all keys from the dialog text dictionary. If they are keys, it gets the key for the current index and retrieves the associated value. A dictionary consists of a key and value. Retrieve the keys from the value dictionary. If they are keys, it gets the first key, which is the speaker's name, and second key, which is the dialog text. Set the dialog labels text to the dialog text and the name labels text to the speaker's name. Make the dialog UI visible by setting visible to true. In the on next button press function, increase the current index to proceed to the next dialog. If there are more dialog text, it calls show next text to display the next text. If no more texts are available, it hides the dialog UI by setting visible to false. Now we create a new 2D scene, we call it level. Add a canvas layer and our dialog box as the child of it. Add the scripts to the level. And now when we run the level, 
we see the dialog works. Road to 500. Now I have a quick favor to ask. Over 90% of you watching right now and subscribe to the channel. We are on our road to 500 subscribers and your support would mean the world to me. So if you enjoyed this content, please hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up and ring the bell icon to stay updated with more videos like this. Drop a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions. The link to GitHub is in the description. Until next time, happy coding and keep gaming.